Hello everyone. Again, it is such a joy for me to bring you the Word of God on today. Um, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Galatians, the fifth chapter, and we're going to be looking at that seventh through the eighth verse, and it reads, Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion, idea, or belief cometh not of him that calleth you. Let us pray. Holy Father, we come in the name of Jesus, and again, we just want to say thank you for the reading and the hearing of your word. I ask that you will prepare every heart and mind, even now, to not only hear this word, but receive it and apply it to their lives. In Jesus' name we praise you. Amen. Amen. In part one and two of this message, we talked about hindrances, distractions, and false teachers. Noting that, uh, how, so how, how many struggle with change. Um, we stated that the change had come, but their foundation was following uh, the, the principles of the law, basic rules which they really could not follow. Amen? Struggling with the fact that the just shall live by faith, believing on the name of Jesus Christ alone and not under the law was something that they really, really struggled with. We found that according to God's plan, we were adopted into his family, uh, making us heirs. So we share through faith in Jesus Christ all the rights, amen, of God's resources, telling us that adoption gives us all the rights and privileges of that family, property, possessions, and the name, amen, or the reputation, which is a measure of his or her influence, whether good or bad, amen. It is the basis of leadership, um, a most treasured and powerful asset, talking about reputation. Reputation is what others know about you, amen? It is what others um, present, or, or it's how you present yourself to others, amen? Therefore, one of the greatest components of a reputation or a name, a good name, is trust, amen? So can someone uh, trust or truly depend on you, amen? Is your name or reputation to be trusted? Are you a man or woman of your word, amen? And uh, so in other words, do you have a good reputation, amen? <laughs> Think about that. Well, the truth is many of us don't, but there is someone who does, and we're gonna come back to that, amen? Remember in Galatians, the second chapter in the 11 verse, um, when we talked about how Paul had to correct Peter, but it says, but when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. For before, the Christ, for before that certain came unto James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself because he was afraid of the Jews. Here we stated that even though Paul had a reputation of being a leader in the church, he was acting like a hypocrite. Amen. Trying to compromise to get along, revealing two sides of his character. But as we stated before, we should never, if at all possible, compromise the truth of God's word. Amen? Yet many of us do. Wanting to be accepted, just to fit in, not to feel awkward or, or, or embarrassed or, or out of place. We want to be respected, appreciated, and loved. Amen? But many times the truth is we compromise our faith and morals to be with that man or that woman, amen? To get that job, to do whatever we have to do to get our bills paid, or even to not cause problems. And this is like um, keeping the peace, as they say, amen? We're revealing two sides of our character, whether we know it or not, amen? Some even go as far as using drugs. They, they get caught up in things that people want them to do, drinking alcohol to get drunk, or even having sex with anybody. You did run well. Who did hinder you, amen? Listen, if you feel like or seem to be changing your Christian belief or morals just to a comfort or, or be accepted by someone, don't, amen? And after a while, if you read the scriptures, Peter understood the importance of this. He remembered uh, when Jesus turned and spake to him with concern and in love, and this is in Luke the chap uh, chapter 22, knowing his spirit was willing, but his flesh was weak. It says, and the Lord said, verse um, 31, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. He says, but I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. He says, and when you are converted, change for a new or different use. He says, strengthen your brethren. Paul, uh, Peter remembered when the day of Pentecost had fully come. 
and that they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. You can represent it in Acts, the second chapter, the first through the fourth verse. It says, and when the multitude came together confused, um, because every man heard in his own language the wonderful works of God. It says, Peter lifted up his voice to preach and to explain that these are not drunk as ye suppose, but that this is that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel. Then if you look in chapter three of the book of Acts, amen, we see that Peter knew what he had, amen. He knew what he had inherited by faith. Now, go with me to Acts the third chapter. We're gonna look at that first verse. He says, now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful to ask in alms. And this is uh, begging for money or food or, or anything that's given in charity. Amen. So it says that uh, they entered into the temple. So seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, this man asked in alms. He asked for money. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John said, look on us. And the, he gave attention unto them, look, expecting to receive something of them. It says, then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. Think about this. Silver and gold have I none. I don't have any money to give you. I don't have any food to give you. But such as I have, he says, give I thee. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he said, rise up and walk. And he, listen, with confidence in the name of Jesus, took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately the scripture says his feet and ankle bones received strength. Peter knew, amen, that he had the right to use the name of Jesus. He knew that it was his by faith. Amen. And the people who knew him, the scripture says, um, the man were filled with wonder and amazement as they ran together. It says, when Peter saw this, he asked the people, he says, why are you so surprised? Or why are you looking on us uh, as if by our own power or, or, or holiness, we have made this man to walk? Look at verse 13. Peter said, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, he said, the God of our fathers, have glorified his son Jesus, huh? And his name through faith in his name, verse 16, has made this man strong. Listen, the lame man was expecting to receive something. And Peter knew that he had the right to use the name of Jesus, amen? Not play with it or, or make, uh, make jokes using it, amen? Peter trusted in the name of Jesus, why? Because of his reputation, because of his influence and what he had presented to others about himself being the son of God. Amen. We are the children of God, heirs by adoption. So we must understand that God deals with the born again person within us. The, tr uh, the, the, um, the inward man, amen, the spirit, our true self, amen. Spiritual things are revealed to the inner man, amen. And you have to understand that the true secret of the divine life is to actually live in the spirit, walk in the spirit, in the light of his word, in the mirror of his truth. Amen. As we behold the glory of Christ in scripture, according to the word, we are being transformed into the same image. Amen. From glory to glory. In other words, the more that we're in the word of God, the more the word of God is in us. Amen. Amen. Therefore, the only way to know God Amen. And the Lord Jesus Christ is through the spirit. Amen. In other words, we must be born again. You did run well. Who did hinder you? Listen, until the spirit gains the mastery over your emotions and your flesh, and that's the spirit and the mind working together, your faith will never be strong. Understand that the mind accepts and knows the truth. Amen. It is the emotions and the flesh that we struggle with. You see, the spirit and the mind knows when something is over. Think about it. It knows when the thrill of sin is no longer working. It knows when uh, it's no longer exciting. And it also knows when it's no longer holding your attention. Amen. But the flesh and the emotions keep us bound. They keep us pretending. Amen. They keep us holding on. 
They keep us wanting that which doesn't want us. Think about this. It is so very important that children of God know who they are. Amen. And until we truly, truly believe that we are in Christ. Amen. We must uh, we will not know the riches. Amen. Uh, 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 or anything that belongs to us. We are no we, we won't even respect the abilities or the the uh, the gifts. Amen. That God has given us like the power that's in his name. Amen. We are heirs of God by adoption. Amen. And we are free to serve him without fear. Now you think about this. Amen. We are free to serve him without fear. I want to leave you with this. Um, in the book of Luke, um, a priest named Zacharias and his wife, uh, Elizabeth, were both righteous according to the word. And um, they wanted a child, but they couldn't have one, but they prayed for one. Amen. So it says that the angel Gabriel went to, uh, came to um, uh, Zacharias and he said to him, fear not. He said, God has heard your prayers. Um, you can represent that in Luke, the first chapter, the 13th verse. But Zacharias, he didn't believe it. So the angel said unto him that you would be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things were presented. Amen. So on the day that a child was to be named John, the scripture says that God loosed his tongue, filled him with the Holy Ghost. And this is what uh, Zechariah said. In Luke, the first chapter, it was 68 verse. And it reads, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swear to our father Abraham. Verse 74, that we, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives. Amen. Listen, we are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, the lamb of the living God. Amen. We are chosen by God, adopted into his family. We are blessed. Amen. Delivered and made free from sin and death. And we have a right to the tree of life. Why? Because we believe on the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Therefore, we shouldn't allow anything or anyone to get in the way of this truth. God's love is truly open to you and you can come to him just as you are. Amen. But understand this to stay there. You must accept his gift. You must be born again. Amen and be willing to change. God has done a work in the earth and his plan is that we all, amen, would be saved. We're not, but he said in his word, my sheep hear my voice. So even as I'm speaking to you now and you're hearing and you're listening, let this word sink into it within you and, and go back and listen to it again if you have to because we are the heirs of God and join heirs with Jesus. Amen. And we have we are blessed with the blessings of Abraham. And if you look into this word and even uh, through the mirror of this word and then begin to look at your life, I ask you again, ye did run well. Who did hinder you? Who is hindering you? Amen. The just shall live by faith according to this word. So I just ask that you would just reflect. And if it is you find yourself, amen, in an in a area of need, just ask God to help you. And I'm sure that he will. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Father, we come in the name of Jesus. And again, we just want to say thank you for the reading and the hearing of this word. We ask even the more that you would just allow the hearts and minds to comprehend this truth, to just stare, listen to it, oh God, and just realize who it is that we are what it is that we have through your son, Jesus Christ. You have been good to us, O oh God, you are yet good. And in spite of all things, we, you deserve all the praise. But Father, we thank you for the ability to just know that you are in the midst, no matter what it looks like or even appears to be, Father. We're speaking those things that be not as though they were, because it's not what we see, it's what we believe will be. And it is in Jesus' precious name that we praise you. Amen. 
again, we just want to say thank you for being with us on today. I pray that you there's something that you got out of the word by hearing. The scripture says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So I ask even the more that you would just uh, visit our website. Again, just listen to the messages. There are many messages, um, uh, videos that you can um, reflect on. We hope that you would just continue to grow, continue to read your word, continue to pray, and continue to allow God to be God in your life. Amen? Amen. See you next time. Thank you.